Greetings to Taipei. I'm greeting you from Canada, from Rockingham in Ontario, from a um, an old homestead that is off-grid and solar-powered. What I will try to do here is to give you a short, brief, uh, key element introduction into the World Nuclear Industry Status Report 2018. Now the status report is a project that has been ongoing for uh, over a decade and <clears throat> this year's report is put together has been put together by uh, nine experts interdisciplinary from five countries including four university professors from Tokyo, from London, from uh, uh, Vancouver in Canada um, and uh, from Berlin. Uh, the, the main focus of the status report is the development, the status and trends of the nuclear reactor uh, industry. Uh, let's go right into the issues. Here we have the reactor startups and shutdowns in the world. Uh, as you can see, there was a, a big uh, uh, wave in the 1970s, another wave in the 1980s, and uh, ever since uh, there was a flat development. Now in 2017 we have seen four reactor startups uh, and uh, three shutdowns. However, the four of the four startups, three were in China, one was in Pakistan, built by Chinese companies. So it's very much a, a Chinese story. And as you can see from the uh, yellow parts of the developments, uh, basically over the past decade, uh, the statistics have been very much uh, determined by uh, China. Uh, so far in 2018, until the early November uh, of this year, we have seen uh, nine startups of which seven were in China. Again, this year will show another year dominated by Chinese developments. Now, what does this give uh, globally? Uh, we see here the uninterrupted rise of uh, the nuclear uh, reactors. The blue bars are uh, the numbers of reactors operating in the world um, until the 19, uh, late 1980s. And then there's this flat development until Fukushima kicked in uh, in 2011 with a steep drop. Uh, so today we have, at the middle of 2018, we had 413 reactors operating. Uh, that is still, you know, significantly below the maximum historical number of 438 uh, that was in 2002. Uh, by the way, this was way before Fukushima, uh, uh, the disaster actually started in 2011. Uh, so we have to, we, we, if you, we put it back into historical context, we're still below a number of uh, units operating that we have seen in the late 1980s. Um, <clears throat> uh, when we see the uh, electricity generation, we see that it peaked historically in 2006. Uh, and we have seen, however, a, an increase over the past five years globally. Uh, but again, if we look at the Chinese role in this, we realize that um, in the past three years, if you take China out, the rest of the world was actually declining in the production of uh, uh, nuclear power. And this is very well illustrated also as a global trend uh, in the share of uh, uh, nuclear power in the global electricity generation, uh, which has peaked for nuclear power in 1996 with about 17.5% uh, and we're standing currently just about above 10%. Uh, so this decrease has been ongoing for a long time. So if we look into the future, obviously the uh, reactors under construction is, a, is an important indicator. Uh, we see here the importance of looking over long periods of time. Uh, the the uh, reactor building industry is uh, a long-term industry. 
doesn't make sense to just look at a single year or even a decade. doesn't tell you the whole story. So uh, the, the peak was reached already in the, in the late 1970s with 234 reactors listed as under construction. Uh, you know, so compare this with uh, 50 reactors and the statistics uh, by mid-2018. Uh, so it's a relatively low number. Uh, we also see that over the past years, there was a continuous decline in the number of reactors under construction from, from uh, 68 in, in uh, 2013 uh, to down to 50 uh, in, in mid-2018. Uh, Who is building? Well, there is no uh, surprise. Uh, China is the main builder. Uh, we have seen uh, that um, 16 reactors as, as of mid-year were under construction. Of these 16, uh, four have uh, already started up now, so there's the remaining 12 reactors uh, under construction in China. And all the other countries have single-digit uh, numbers under construction. India, seven. Russia, five. We also see that some of these construction starts uh, if you look, for example, at uh, Slovakia, uh, we're in the 1980s, so over 30 years ago, and increasing number uh, also with over 10 years, for example, Finland and France now have uh, passed the decade of construction time. That is one of the big problems of the industry. Uh, of those 50 reactors, 33 to 36 were behind schedule. Now, we have in the, the World Nuclear Status Report uh, a certain number of focus countries, and I'm just giving you a couple of blips on uh, specific countries. Now, there's this myth of Germany phasing out nuclear power and uh, increasing um, fossil fuel uh, production. Uh, as you can see from this graph very clearly that uh, the increase of renewable electricity generation has been almost double the loss of uh, the um, e electricity generation by nuclear power. Uh, the fossil fuel generation has been reduced, mainly hard coal, uh, with, it, with uh, unfortunately, and this is the big problem in, in Germany, a, a rather a stable level of, um, of uh, lignite, uh, brown coal. So uh, that is, Germany's problem really is to increase efficiency even though uh, uh, consumption, as you can see, decreased by 16%, by but that's not enough. On the other hand, Germany became also the largest net electricity exporter in uh, Europe. Uh, it has overtaken France in 2016 and since has enlarged its, uh, um, its difference with, um, as a leader uh, with France. Uh, so uh, another uh, example is the United States, uh, where uh, we have seen in, in recent years a dramatic situation of uh, the, the, the economic situation of the nuclear uh, reactors that are operating, and um, of 18 early closure announcements for the period 2009 to 2025, a third, so six have already been shut down uh, by the mid by mid uh, 2018, uh, and it's it's a clearly a an indication that the even amortized reactors uh, uh, in the United States cannot compete with the wholesale market prices, and they're, they're, these market prices are also uh, um, driven by cheap. Uh, natural gas, uh, fracking gas in, in, in the United States, but uh, increasingly by very cheap renewable energy. So we have now prices of in the market, uh, auctions guaranteed for 20 years uh, in uh, the United States that undercut the commercial prices for uh, nuclear power of amortized uh, reactors. So that is that is a real challenge for the nuclear industry in the United States. Now we see here, uh, on the other hand, the development of the investments in renewable energy and 
here we see dramatically how China has gone ahead with 126 billion uh, estimated investment in 2017. Uh, this is more than three times the number two in the top 10, the United States with uh, uh, around 40 billion uh, dollars uh, invested. Um, now, what is the, the, the key reason here is that, as you can see here from the levelized cost of energy uh, in, in US dollars per megawatt hour, the dramatic decrease in, uh, especially in solar uh, photovoltaics electricity uh, by uh, 86%, uh, wind went down by 67%. Uh, and uh, the only technology that actually went up is uh, nuclear power with an estimated increase over that period of time of 20%. 20, uh, 20 so uh, cheaper prices, uh, less lower costs uh, lead to more investment, so more capacity added. If you look at the dramatic increase since the year 2000 um, with uh, almost 500 gigawatts uh, added net in wind, uh, 400 added in uh, solar, and basically a stabilization of uh, nuclear installed capacity. If you look at production, uh, over 1100 terawatt hours added by wind, uh, close to 450 added by solar power, uh, and 240 roughly uh, added by uh, by nuclear. So even solar power now outpaced uh, uh, nuclear when it comes to added uh, terawatt hours. Uh, if you look at the situation in China, the phenomenal increase, uh, especially in 2017 for solar, um, uh, but also the, the continued increase in, in wind. So in spite of uh, the dominating role of China in the buildup of nuclear power, wind alone generates still more power in China than in than uh, nuclear power. So globally this means there's a tiny increase of nuclear power generation, about uh, uh, 1% that is due to China. Um, there's a long-term decline of nuclear power's role. Uh, the cost differential between nuclear and renewables continues to increase, nuclear power becoming more expensive, essentially uh, because of the existing reactors uh, uh, being more costly to, to maintain operating. Uh, and um, we see that uh, um, uh, in increasing number now, nine of 31 nuclear countries generate more power with renewables than nuclear. Uh, the capacity additions we have seen uh, in nuclear are insignificant. You have to compare one gigawatt added net, one, uh, in 2017 to be compared of an overall global market of 257 uh, gigawatt, of which 157 were uh, renewables. So nuclear power essentially becomes irrelevant in the electricity industry. The future outlook uh, with construction starts down from 15 uh, in 2010 to 5 in 2017 and three in 2018 so far, um, uh, and even not uh, China starting any commercial reactor building, uh, indicates that uh, nuclear power remains a threatened species. And it should be made very clearly, clearly that uh, in the climate change debate, you know, because the costs are so incredibly high for nuclear power, uh, investing into a technology that is more expensive than another technology in order to mitigate uh, greenhouse gas emissions meaning means killing the climate. So today, new nuclear power clearly is not competitive anymore and therefore contributes to killing the climate rather than solving the climate crisis. And this is even true for amortized reactors in, in an increasing number of market segments around the planet. Thank you very much for your attention.